Hello and welcome to my video. Now, uh, the other day I, I put up a post on Facebook which showed um, a, a sketch that I did on my palette in, I think it was about 35 seconds, maybe 36. I don't think that extra second means much, but anyway, this is a way of working out a, a composition quickly and very um, cheaply on your palette. Uh, my palette is a piece of glass which is on a uh, a work surface that I've had built here to store my paintings underneath and um, the good thing about this is that you can sketch something out really fast and if it's not right you can just wipe it off have another go and, and keep going until you actually get the result that you're looking for so uh, I've, I've got a timer down here I'm going to set the timer going and I'll try and do something in around 35 uh, seconds I've got this set for 35 I think yep and um, let's see what happens. So uh, this is obviously a tonalist painting. It's uh, there's no detail. Any, any detail that is in there is just uh, purely coincidental. And uh, off we go. So start the clock. Uh, let me put it where you can see me start the clock there. And let's see what we can get. Off we go. So let's just get some colour down. Oh, and the colours I'm using basically are um, sap green and uh, red. 20 seconds to go. So there's a sky up there. You have to imagine that's a bit of sky. Here's some trees on the horizon. A little bit of a hill coming down here. A little bit of uh, wiping with some paper. How long have I got? I've got six seconds. So a little bit of brightness in the sky. A few swipes down there. And there's a there's a little something. What can we do? I'll just stop that horrible noise. So as you can see, I got some, the shape of some trees here. I got some light on a field below and uh, I can then develop that with a few tickles and I could probably add a tree or something down here. So, so there we are. Um, there, I took a couple of extra seconds. So you could do something like that uh, to actually um, get you inspired to paint something um, a, a little bit more, I hate, hate to use the word, detailed. So what I'll do now, I'm just going to do it again. Nice big spatula here. So I'm just going to push the paint up to the top like that. Just so I've got a, a clean surface. And then uh, I won't bother with the timer this time because I think you, you get the idea, I hope, anyway. So if I now um, pull the paint down like this, just make, just get some coverage, like so, maybe a couple of swipes across there just to build up the paint. There's another, there's another one on its way, so let's just get a nice patch, like so. You could also do it this way slightly different. Maybe I'll set the timer again. So there's there's what I'll be working on. And let's get the same brush. Only this time I'm going to do it a little bit differently. You see now if, if you um, have trouble trying to think of something to paint this could be a good way to actually take away some of that stress. I'm just going to increase, increase that down there a little bit so that we have a bigger picture. Always go for the bigger picture. Right now, this isn't the uh, this isn't all I'm covering in this video. I'll be doing whatever I do on here. I'll sort of do on uh, a board, which I've got ready, and it's a smaller board than I would normally work on. It's um, in fact I cut a board in half, so it's uh, sixty by forty, I think. Yeah. So you could do it this way as well. You could say, well, okay, I'm going to start with a very light sky. So you could use some paper just along the top, like so, and just get a really light looking sky at the top. I know it's not blue, but not all skies are blue. And um, a bit more paper. Just a, a little extra bit of light on the horizon there, like so. cheapo brush. Let's have, uh, I do like the clump of trees at the top here, but maybe I'll tell you what I'll do this time. Let's have, um, let's have a hill. Let's just do some shapes like that on the top. 
just to start my hill off. And I think you'll agree this is possibly the, the cheapest um, sketch pad or practice board that you'll, you'll ever have. So let's try something else. Let's have let's have a, a hill there, like so. And um, over here we'll have a little hint of another hill. So in fact, we, what we got here is a valley. So that's looking interesting. And then down here we'll bring we'll bring a light channel down across that way, and then just fill in the gaps really. A little bit more paint there, a little bit here, a couple of trees over this, whatever that is coming down there. Could, you know, could be a, I don't know what it is. Um, a field, a, a very wonky field. So there's a there's a quick little mountain scape. And then what you could also do is just put a few blobs in the sky, like so. Get another piece of paper. Make it into a sausage. That's a sausage. And then just start working on the sky, like so, just to get some tones going. Like so. There we are. And if you want to do enhance this a little bit down here, again, same piece of paper. Try and find the bit without the paint on it. And then um, introduce a little bit more light. So we could, uh, let's see, what could we do? We could say, let's have some light on the ground up through there, just a little bit. And then maybe a little bit more light across there. Just a little bit and then carry it on round. You see now I've completely ruined the field. But then again, I haven't because all you do is stop it looking like a brush stroke and fill in a few gaps to break it up so that it looks as though it's in the landscape rather than a wipe in the paint on top of the landscape. And there we are. Put a little bit more of a peak on that hill, I think. So there's a quick sketch that could be developed into a painting. It doesn't take long, as you can see. And uh, of course, again, if that's not what you wanted, you just get your spatula and then you demolish it like so and start again. It's very satisfying because you don't need anything to clean your surface other than a piece of dry paper. You don't need any chemicals. You just tidy it up. Like so. And then wipe it clean. Well, cleanish. Doesn't matter if you leave a little bit of tone on there so it can enhance the painting actually. So there we are, that's now clean enough to do another one. So let's have something else. Let's have um let's have another hill, but we'll move the hill up to this side here. So let's have the hill coming down there. Like so nice hill with a bit of purpose to it. So you've got grassy slope over there, you've got some distance stuff going on over on the left there, and then down here, a bit more paint. We could uh, darken the foreground a bit. So take a little bit of colour up there. A little bit more green and red, sap green and red ochre. A nice clump of trees down the bottom here somewhere. And then finish off with a, just a bit of tone in the foreground. So there's another one for you. So that's, that gives you plenty of ideas really quickly. Let's just put some taller trees at the bottom of the hill there. Okay, so there you go. Right, so on with today's painting, which as I said is uh, um, 60 by 40 so it's quite a small painting compared to what I normally do and um, I might even paint this who knows all I have to do is remember it and it's not that difficult really because it's um, so simple there we are okay see you in a moment when I've moved my camera and just quickly before I get going on today's painting, 
This is, um, this is something I did recently, uh, which was for my online Zoom class. Um, I don't know, about uh, a week ago, just over a week ago. Um, this was painted um, in about, I think it took just over an hour, um, and 25 people attended the Zoom class. And they, most of them seem to be wanting to come back. So if you are interested in doing this, um, I'll put a link um, underneath this video in the info box um, to the company that organises my bookings. That's called um, Ribbon. Um, and I'll also put the dates of my um, up and coming classes on Facebook uh, when I have dates fixed. There are spaces in July and there are some spaces, I think, in uh, May. Um, June, I'm taking some time off, but I'll be back in July. And I, I'm usually doing about two of these a month now, right until the end of the year. So if you're interested, um, just contact me either through Facebook or um, go to my website. That, again, the link is below and uh, you'll find all the information there. So be nice to see you and uh, after the lesson by the way the, the class goes on for um, 90 minutes first hour is painting and the last half an hour is just um, chatting and q, uh, q a is basically ask me anything you like and uh, i'll do my best to answer it for you okay so on with today's painting okay off we go so um, this one uh, I won't do in 30 seconds, oh, I don't know. If I can get it to 20 minutes to half an hour, I'll be happy because I put up videos that are an hour, sometimes just over an hour, and um, I'm not sure how many people stay to the end. It's always good to know if you do, to just put a comment um, at the end if you feel like it, just to say whether you're still there or not. So, encouraging to know if people do stay to the end and I understand if you don't uh, this sort of painting isn't for everyone it's, uh, it's just one of those things now so okay as I said before I've given you the measurements I'm pretty sure I give you the measurements anyway um, <clears throat> so I got my usual cheap brush not a very big one and we'll just see what we do I'm, I'm going to just do something with um, you know, a bit of perspective. And let's, should we have a man? Let's have a bit of a hill. Let's do what roughly what we did on the sketch. Let's have a bit of a hill over here. So there we are. There's a hill. The beginnings of a hill. At the moment, it's a hill. At now, uh, what should we do down here? Let's just get some shapes in. It's all about getting lights and contrasts. And because uh, that's what makes pictures come alive. It's not necessarily down to how colourful you make a picture. It's, it's how striking you can make what you've got just using a few colours and how you can quickly create the illusion that there's something going on so here obviously I'm after getting this bit here closer than that and it and it is already because of the shapes that I've made in the paint and they're quite random there's nothing really planned there um, it's just uh, it's just one of these things where you just see what happens really. now um, someone sent me some one of my students from uh, well, it must have been 2019 sent me a tub of lapis lazuli so st this come, I think comes from Afghanistan and um, it's not cheap when you mix it with oil it becomes very dark it's a very pale powder in the tube but it comes out dark I mean really dark blue and um, I'm just going to add a little bit here which I'll be using later I don't think I want to do a green sky. I want to do uh, my usual stormy sort of sky. Here we go again. 
My easel just is not gripping. Let's just do my usual wedging paintbrush behind it. Um, so really dark, very interesting blue to me. Some people may look at this and I'll say, that's possibly the worst blue I've ever seen, but there you go. Now, um, just putting that on the sky really quickly. And I'm going to push it here, right up to the edge of the hill. Notice how I'm working this in, using the tip of the brush to follow the shape of the line of the hill there a little bit. Not too much, doesn't have to be exact, because this will change here. So let's just turn that into something slightly more like a sky. Okay, just a little bit of interesting blue. And um, time for some paper. This is the um, very beginning of a painting. I have a lot of these, um, and I, I keep intending to finish them off, but uh, I don't always get around to it because of my other commitments, but I do have quite a stack of paintings that I could, I could do some glazing on, and I think I must pull my finger out a bit and just get on with it because I'm sure people get sick of waiting. Now here, what I'm going to do is just pull it right down to the ground. So you can see that white area there. It's just the board showing through. So if I just smudge that down here. It doesn't matter if I pull some of the green into the sky because the blue is quite powerful and uh, it will lose it. They'll just blend together. And um, like I said, it won't matter. It just makes more interesting tones uh, in the paint. There we are. When I say there we are, that doesn't mean it's finished. It just means um, there we are at the moment. So I'm going to introduce some light up here to the hill. Just using quite random movements of the paper because I want to give I want to give I, I want texture it's texture you see that builds up the illusion of detail because over a great distance detail just becomes texture a little bit of light there and definitely I think a little bit across there. Okay. So let me see. There are lots and lots of questions I get asked on um, YouTube, and um, I'll, I'll just whip through a few of them. Um, first of all, people want to know if they can come here to do one of my courses. Well, at the moment you can't. Um, because of the way things are globally um, I will I'm sure one day I will start having uh, lessons again um, but just not at the moment um, and the other thing that uh, may put people off is that I can't be vaccinated because I have too many allergies and um, the last time I had a vaccination uh, was for flu, back in the 90s I think it was, and it almost wiped me out. I became so ill after the injection that uh, I won't be doing that again. And my doctor said there's no way I can be vaccinated because it would be too dangerous. So bear that in mind, I can't be vaccinated. Um, so there we go the way it is so uh, but that of course doesn't prevent me from 
running classes online. I'm going to introduce a little bit of white into the sky. I know it's white over there on the right above the hill, but I want I want the white to uh, be a bit more mobile. So the same brush that I've just been using, which is a cheap French decorating brush. And I'm just going to give it a quick wipe to get the surplus paint off. I don't care if this goes a little bit blue. In fact, I quite I want it to. Really. So uh, we'll just have a little bit of white in the sky there, just to make that a little bit more neutral. There, and just down to the land, just enough for it to make contact. That gives you another little bit of perspective over there. However, I will probably build up the, um, the land there a bit more. So um, here, I think a little bit of light there. I'm not trying to make it look like, you know, a, any particular kind of cloud at the moment. I'm just making the sky light. That's all I'm after at the moment. All right. So uh, a bit more white, so a little bit up there. I like I like my skies to be um, I don't know what's the word, slightly, oh, you know, monumental. Maybe that's not the right word. Um, I want them to have a bit of grandeur about them. I, I have to say I like the landscape part. I like every part really of the painting, but. Um, I don't want the sky to appear to be an afterthought. It's got to be something in its own right. It's got to make people say, cool, there's a sky, if you know what I mean. So the, the paint I'm putting on at the moment on the sky does not have oil in it, except for the blue. This is, um, this is exactly the same colour I was putting up here, a bit of white mixing with the blue. And what I've done, I've added some red ochre to that. And that will give me a sort of um, slightly warm sort of feeling to the sky here. So let's just get a few shapes in there. Now, I have this theory. If you, if you sort of, a uh, word I used to hear an awful lot, when I was working in publishing is um, faffing, don't faff around. <laughs> and um, the th it's the same with skies, don't faff, just get it, that, just get something on the board until you get something on here, you see, you can't do anything, you can't do anything with it. You can stand in front of a painting with the paint on your brush going, where and what do I do now? So that, that will just make you um, pause possibly for too long. Let's just do it. Just get it on there and not worry because if it goes wrong then you just put it right. And if you can't put it right, take it off. Wipe everything off. If everything turns into a mess, just destroy the whole thing because um, you'll learn more. Um, right, so I've got a nice, nice bit of blue down there. I know it's all blotchy and smudgy at the moment, but that's okay. It's the way they go. Uh, let's have some light there, I think. Just a touch. In fact, I'm going to put a touch more light in the sky. When I, f when I finish the sky, uh, I'll go back to the landscape. So I've got my palette knife here. And uh, just giving it a good clean, nice and glistening. So, a little bit of white on there. Let's have, um, let's have it really light there. Yeah, why not? Why not is a good enough reason to do something. Well, you know, not everything in life, obviously, but in painting, just why not? Just do it. Just enjoy the process of either getting it right or getting it very wrong because either way you'll learn something okay nice little bit of cloud just up there behind the hill just 
need to get a little bit more white. I use titanium white, obviously. Most people do nowadays. When I first started painting, I used to use flake white, but of course you can't do that now because it's, um, it contains lead. And it was quite a... It was actually... A diff there was a difference. It was, you know, the most white white you could possibly get. Okay, so there's a, there's a sort of shape coming across there. Put a little bit in there just to break it a bit. Always remember, take the cloud off the edge of the painting. Clouds have to do that. Imagine that this is a window frame and you're looking through the window. When you look at the clouds through a window, they don't just end in your window frame. They go off outside like so. So I have a little bit just there. Okay. Next is to get a big brush, which... Um, I do have here. Well, it's like, uh, actually not as big as I would normally use because the painting uh, is not a big painting. So I'm going to find... Well, I, I, I use the word find loosely. Am I going to find a brush? I can't find a small one. What's this one there? No, that one's too stiff. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to use a new one. Right. Um, cheap brush. Oh yes, one of the things people ask me. They say, where can you get these brushes? Well, um, I can't tell you because they're just from a, fr a little uh, DIY shop in um, France. So unless you're in France, that won't mean anything to you. But uh, if you are in France, I go to Monsieur Bricolage or Intermarché. Uh, oh no, it's Mr. Bricolage. And um, that's where I get them. And they're usually bristle and a bit of nylon. This one is mostly nylon and a bit of bristle but it's okay it's nice and soft which is exactly what I want because all I'm going to do is just drag it over the sky carefully like that and then up here and across hardly making any contact really just just touching it very very lightly and uh, picks up a little bit of paint but not much um, you just have to wipe it a little bit just to get the surplus paint off touch it on the painting like so and you will get nice soft interesting clouds of a certain type no idea what they are So, things don't overdo this. Just, just a little bit of, just a gentle touch, like so. So I might leave that, like that at the moment. I may add some more darkness down here, but I'm not quite ready to do that yet. So I'm going to just set the big brush aside and start to sort of sculpt the landscape a bit. Um, what have I got here? lump of paint which is definitely in the wrong place okay so let's see what can we do with the landscape i think the first thing that i'd like to do is to lighten the land through there i want to get that feeling of perspective so to do that i need to bring the land and the sky together and that's just one of these things where you just do it until it looks right And you'll know, you'll know exactly when you've got the right sort of layering of perspective as you as you work back. I don't like that cloud there. It's a little bit um, bit isolated. And I know I know that happens, but um, it just sticks out like a sore thumb, and I don't really want it to. So I'm just going to push that around a bit until it does as it's told. Put a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's quite interesting. Of course, you could have a, a dark bit of cloud coming over that light bit just there. That might be quite interesting. Yeah, why not? And then I think I'll carry that down and across here. Right. 
So maybe I won't add any darkness down there. Maybe I'll just keep it so that it's foggy. Maybe I'll even lift the land up into that bit because here, just there, that little dark bit there, that sort of from my angle looks uh, like the land continues up to that level rather than down here. So I think, yeah, I'll, I'll work on that. Um, and in fact, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to pick up some of this lapis lazuli paint, just a little bit on the tip. And I'm just going to put some shapes through there, just to bring the land up, like so. Okay, when I when I say things like like so, and there's a pause, it's because I'm looking in the viewfinder of my camera because then I see more of what you're going to see rather than just what I'm seeing. So it doesn't matter what's happening here. I'm leaving it messy there because I can lose that in a minute. I'm just, I just want the most of this to start to come together a bit just by putting in a few dark shapes slightly further up the painting, like so. Ooh, I quite like that and I've destroyed it, never mind always do it again. Um, back to YouTube. Um, yeah, the, I keep uh, everybody, not everybody, of course, isn't it terrible how we exaggerate? A lot of people say to me, can I do this with acrylics? No, you can't. You could paint a picture that looks like this with acrylics, but it would be a different technique. This is oil paint. I always work with oil paint. Uh, I've used acrylics, but I'm not keen, I have to say. Uh, it's just not my thing. I was trained to paint um, with oil paint, and I feel a, a sort of natural feeling toward oil paint. It just interests me more. And uh, it's just the way it is, I'm afraid. So, um, but by all means try, I mean, don't take my word for it, you have a go. I think you'll find though, because, because the, the thing is this keeps oil paint stays nice and mobile for quite a long time. Um, I don't necessarily need that in my paintings because I'm used to working quite fast. But uh, if you want to get this effect the way I'm doing it, I recommend oil because it's just so forgiving. Right, so that's looking sort of quite interesting through there. A little bit more distance. And back to the landscape. Right, so what do I need to do? What do I need to do? Um, I have to say, when I'm making these videos, uh, all the, when I say, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? It's, it's my way of... It's just my way of thinking. I'm continually asking myself questions as I paint. What if I did this? What if I did that? Because you don't know until you try. Now then. Now, what should we do? Let's, um, I'm looking for the bits that I like. Okay, there's lots of bits I like. I like what's going on through here. I like that little bit of light there, just coming down there between the green and the blue. That I like. I like this field, but it needs breaking up. I like that light up there. Okay. I quite like the way the, the sky and the land mix up here, but I've got to watch my perspective, you see, because if we're here, would we, ne would we necessarily see? I don't know that we would, you know, but I'll come to that in a moment. Um, so down here, as I said, I like that little bit of light there, so I think I might um, just just stretch it a little bit, just a touch. Things in a painting that make it look detailed when it isn't. It's these little touches, like, for instance, if I just put a little bit of light there, why not? Looks okay. If it looks believable, leave it, because people will believe it. And um, I'm going to just bring a little bit of light down there, like that. That should bring the land forward a little bit round here. 
It does. Good. Now, over in the, this area, I think I'm going to put a few light highlights. Just a few lines. That make it look as though something is going on. I think it needs one of them. And maybe even a line going that way. Yeah. No idea what it is, but it looks sort of, as I said, it looks believable. And uh, that's what we're after. A little bit there. And that, that may be all that I'll do over there. I think it's time I did a bit more work down here. But, oh, I keep doing this. Must be really irritating for some of you. When I do that, I say, oh, I'm just going to do, ah, oh, but, yeah, I must check, oh, ah, I must do this, must do that. Okay. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just bring the land up into the sky a little bit in a few places, either in the form of a bunch of trees. Don't know whether the word bunch is right there, a bunch of trees. Hmm. I think a clump, a clump of trees. There we go. Quite like that. So over here, we've got that little light bit there. That's sort of quite interesting, I suppose. Then up here, I think we ought to get a little bit more texture going up into the sky. And then down along the horizon there just to make it um you see bumps bumps make texture and interest and i think a little bit of land coming upwards just at the edge just to stop people going right off just a little uh, what i call a stopper so i've got this accidental bit of dark here that's sort of quite nice it shows a change of structure in the land so i think i might enhance that just a bit with a little touch of the brush because that's all it takes and then a, another load of trees here I might even take that right up to the edge so we've got an ongoing line of uh, vegetation just there yep nice now down here what do we got we got a bit of white board showing through it's nice, I suppose. Quite often I, I leave things like that because it looks like water, but um, do I want water? I don't know. Let's not have water. Let's just lose some of those light bits there. So it's just a touch of the brush. You don't have to spend hours on that sort of thing. Now I want something down here. It looks okay, but I want, I want to get someone to take people around and into the painting. And I can see something I don't like before I do that, because I know it will um, it'll stop my composition, and that's this. I think I need to bring a little bit of light just up here. There we go. Right, so that's okay. So what I'm going to do, this is one of those things where I don't know, is it bravery or is it stupidity? It depends on your point of view. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some light here and I'm gonna bring some light right down there, like so. That I hope will lead the person up into the landscape. That needs to be just a little bit stronger there. I have to say, working on this size painting is is quite good, I think, from your point of view, because you're you're not seeing my dreaded shoulder being shoved in your face every five seconds. Because I'm because it's so small I can keep out of the way. It's good. Can I bring that up a little bit there? Okay. Now I don't want to leave that just as a pale 
shape taking you into the picture I want it to actually do a bit more than that I want it also to in I don't want I don't just want the interest here and here right I want I want interest to be sort of everywhere if I can and I think this is one of those things that um, causes people problems occasionally I wonder, uh, just while I'm thinking whether we should have a little bit of the ground subsiding just there all right well not really subsiding uh, but just you know a bit of a sudden drop but at the bottom you need to add a little sort of bonus a little bonus tickle okay so here's a bonus tickle something over the front of it just to sort of give it a bit more strength in other words you've got the contrast now between this light area and this tree I know it's not really a tree it's just a lump of paint that's made to roughly resemble a tree so we're gonna have a few of them just down here and then they they stop there maybe that's a corner so we'll have a little bit there like so and down here right so what I was going to do down there I've got this sort of slightly darker paint there I'm going to make that even darker so I do that by applying the paint more slowly I just sort of slowly drag it in that means that I can then uh, open it up either with a piece of paper or just by moving the brush sideways like so okay I'm liking what I'm seeing good um, over here what should we do there we've got this light area here uh, with some dark shapes next to it which look like trees and they're sort of reasonably successful little trees so I'm going to make them into bigger successful little bigger trees uh, just along like so you'll see this uh, when I zoom in at the end as I said I'm trying to keep this as fast as I can I won't I won't I won't um, try to imply that this is water I'll try to you see where I came from um, there was a lot of chalk and we used to get uh, hills like this but you'd also get these sort of outcrops of just sort of chalky ground like so so I'll leave that up to the imagination of the of the viewer it can either be water or it can be chalk so, right I'm still going as fast as I can here so I do want people to hopefully stay to the end right I'm almost there so I'm going to just say a few things right I as I said at the beginning I do courses on zoom if you're interested uh, the info will be below in the box and um, uh, it's uh, I'm doing two a month roughly if you want to come along to a zoom lesson just contact me via my um, Facebook page or you can go to my website again the link for that will be below uh, it lasts the course goes on for an hour and a half an hour of painting half an hour of chat and um, questions and answers let's have a let's have a tree there um, and it's always good it's quite good fun um, there seems to be a regular bunch of people turning up which is great thank you to you all um, most of them are my uh, patrons I have a patreon page and uh, they get a special rate and um, what else can I say about it yeah it's usually on a Saturday so uh, and I do have some people in uh, Australia and New Zealand who are saying that they can't do it because of the time difference and I do understand that it's you're quite a long way away and obviously there's going to be a big time difference I'm just going to have a little bit more there so um, maybe I will have to do a lesson that is just for uh, my Australian and New Zealand friends so there we are I think that's it um, hope you like that hope you've learnt something and uh, I'll uh, pan the camera across it in a minute and I'll put up a you know high resolution photo just so you can see what it uh, what it ended up like okay and I'll see you on the next video thanks for dropping by take care bye for now